Hi, I'm Kevin. Today we're doing stuffed bell peppers. And here are the peppers. I actually have two casseroles that I'm going to be doing. And this one, this is a freezer casserole. And once these are filled, I'm going to freeze them for an easy dinner later on. And then I have another casserole with more peppers, which will be served for dinner tonight. And the reason that I cut the peppers through the stem rather than through the top, as most people do, is so that they will lay low enough in this baking dish so that I don't have to smash them down when I put the lid on. Anyway, let me show you how to prepare a pepper that is cut through the stem, and then we'll make the filling. Yeah, so what you do is stand the pepper upright, and then use a sharp knife, and you want to cut right through the stem, like this. And then you want to remove well, let me grab my paring knife here. You want to remove the seeds and the bitter membranes. The membranes are the white ribs in the pepper. Now, I just go around with a paring knife like this and then knock out the seeds. By the way, you do not have to leave the stem on. I'm leaving mine intact just, well, because I think the peppers will look a little more glamorous that way. You want to make sure you get all of the seeds out. So just gently bang the pepper against the bowl, and they should dislodge just fine. Except for these. Okay. And then, let's see, do we have to do any more cleaning here? Yes. There's still some white rib in here, that membrane. So use a paring knife. Just go around and pluck it out. And then I'll do the same with this one and then come right back. Okay, we're all set. And let's see, this stem is touching the other pepper, so I'm going to remove it. So you turn the pepper upside down and then cut off, if you're keeping stems, you cut off the portion of the stem that would come in contact with other peppers. There. And you'll notice that I'm not using green peppers, and there is a reason for that. When I was a kid, let's see, this would have been in the 1960s, 1970s, my mother used to make stuffed green bell peppers. And I think she used, you know, besides ground beef and rice, I think she used uh, tomato soup uh, and I don't know what else, but the peppers, the green peppers, would bake up this horrible shade of gray, and they just were not attractive. I, I didn't like them. I didn't want to eat them. Um, so, uh, needless to say, I only use ripe peppers, like red peppers, orange peppers, and yellow peppers, okay? So now, back to work. Let me grab my filling ingredients and we'll go proceed to the next step. So when it comes to stuffed bell peppers, I never make the same filling twice. You can fill them with just about anything you like. Here's what I'm using. So I have some ground chicken. I know most people use ground beef. I'm using ground chicken. You could use ground turkey. You could use vegetable crumbles if you don't eat meat. Uh, you could use beans. I think lentil beans would be great. And 
I have two pounds of ground chicken here, and I actually cooked this really early this morning. I got up at five o'clock and started cooking. So I'm putting these in a large mixing bowl, and then I'm going to add some rice. Rice is definitely traditional. I'm going to add, oh, let's see, I cooked one and a half cups of rice. That was uncooked rice, one and a half cups. And I'm going to add about, let's see, a cup and a half. how that works out. And I'm going to actually squish some of this together just to break up any of the larger clumps of chicken. Yeah, I tend to use either ground turkey or ground chicken whenever a recipe calls for ground beef. I just prefer turkey and chicken to beef, unless it's a pot roast. Okay, and then what else do we want to put in here? I have all my goodies ready to go. Let's see, I'm going to add, let's see, I have a 15.5 ounce can of tomato sauce. Let me put that in. Let's see. Just want to moisten it. I don't want this to be super liquidy. Yeah, I'm going to need the whole can. So that's 15.5 ounces. Actually, I could be mixing this with my hands. Remember, a cook's best tools are the hands. Okay, that's looking good. And then, I'm going to add some salt, because I did not salt the chicken when I made it. I'm going to add, oh, a teaspoon of salt. That's kosher salt. And some grinds of black pepper. And, because I love it, some Worcestershire sauce. Worcestershire sauce. That is a hard name to pronounce. And I'm going to guess that that was about two teaspoons of Worcestershire. That mixed in, and then... Now, I did not cook onions with the chicken, so I'm going to add, let's see, onion powder. You don't want to come out of here, why not? There it goes. So I'm going to add, oh, maybe three quarters of a teaspoon of onion powder. You could use diced onion, which you would cook along with your meat, whatever it is, and some garlic powder. Again, about three quarters of a teaspoon. Mix this in. And something else that I absolutely love is tomato paste. So I'm going to add some of that. Grab my spatula here. And I have one of the small cans here. I'm going to add oh, about half of that can. Mix you in. I love tomato paste because it has such a wonderful concentrated flavor. So concentrated that it becomes naturally sweet. Yeah, this is looking good. And I'm looking for a cons consistency 
that pretty much holds together when it's pressed with the fingers. Well, you know what? I'm going to add that whole can of tomato sauce. Why not? Rather, tomato paste. Or I should say, tomato paste. One of my viewers was very upset that I referred to a tomato as a tomato. And I don't know why I say tomato. I just do. So I'm sorry if that upsets you. If you live in England, you're probably grateful that I say tomato. Because then you know I'm pronouncing it the correct way. Okay, and let's check this. Okay, that's perfect. Okay, let me grab a spoon and then we can start filling the peppers. Oh, one other point. I know my mother used to blanch, or actually boil, uh, her green peppers for like, I don't know, five, ten minutes, and then let them cool before she filled them. And that may be one of the reasons that those peppers baked up such an unappetizing shade of gray. So I do not blanch or boil or heat up the peppers at all before I fill and bake them. They, uh, they soften up enough in the oven. And of course, if you freeze them, they will soften up. Soften up. I can't talk today. They will soften up in the freezer. I just don't want mushy peppers. I want them to have a little bit of crunch. Not, not even crunch, just a little bite to them. That way they, um, they contrast with the soft filling. Okay, it's time to fill these peppers. I did taste this filling because it's already cooked. It's safe to eat right now. And it is just perfect. I love all of the flavors. It's very aromatic too. So now, filling, I'm going to move you a little closer. Make sure you can see. And then, this won't be hard to do. Just mound the filling into the pepper. Smash it down. And then do the same with the remaining peppers. Okay, and I'll come back when these are complete. Okay, my freezer batch is done. And uh, now some people like to cook the peppers first at, or bake them off before freezing. I don't do that. I just cover them. And remember, everything is already at room temperature here. I just pop the lid on and then put this in the freezer. And then I let it thaw for 24 hours before baking it off. And speaking of baking, uh, you bake them at 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Now I'm going to do the other peppers that we're having for dinner tonight. Oh, and I will be adding cheese to these when I'm ready to bake them. All right, so these are the peppers that we are going to enjoy for dinner tonight. And I actually think peppers cut through the stem are much, much easier to fill than those cut through the top. We'll do one more here. Oh, I thought maybe I would have too much filling, but I might have just the right amount. And I will put the, um, the list of ingredients in the description box below. And then I hope in the comments section that you will tell me 
what you like to fill your stuffed peppers with. I'll bet there are all kinds of fascinating variations out there. Again, I never fill mine the same way twice, so I may very well like to use your filling recipe. Okay, going to finish these off and then I'll show you the next step. Alright, as a final step, I'm going to throw some mozzarella cheese that I shredded earlier on top of the peppers. And mozzarella is traditional, but you could absolutely use Colby cheese or Monterey Jack or sharp cheddar cheese or even Swiss cheese would be good. So really there are no rules unless you're trying to make traditional peppers. In which case you would probably want to use my mother's green peppers. And I don't mean to bash my mother because she is a wonderful cook and baker. I just didn't like her stuffed green peppers. Okay? Alright, now my oven is already heated to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. So here's what you do. Cover the pan with aluminum foil. You want to cover it tightly. And then this goes into the oven for 45 minutes. And then you uncover, you remove the foil and continue baking for another 15 minutes. And the cheese should be melted, everything should smell wonderful. Okay, I'm going to bake these and then we'll have a little taste. See you in a bit. And if you have any leftover filling, I do, I have a little bit. Uh, trust me, this stuff is delicious as is. You could put it on a uh, toasted homemade hamburger bun for a kinda sorta sloppy joe. Or you could even put this in a taco shell. Would be delicious. So there's absolutely no waste. Okay, we'll be back. Okay, here are the peppers after 45 minutes covered in the oven. And they are looking good. I just want to poke one with a fork. Yep, peppers are softening up, but they're not getting too soft. And that's what I wanted to avoid, was a too soft Pepper. So I'm going to add a little more cheese and then I'm going to pop this back into the oven for exactly 15 minutes. See you in a flash. All right, we're all baked here and I have to say these peppers look as beautiful as they smell. I'm going to fetch a plate and then we can have a little taste. Oh, I think I'll have a yellow one. We're going to pretend there's a green salad over here, all right? This is a very hot. Well, I'm glad I left the stems on. Looks very pretty with that little green stem. Okay, here goes nothing. Oh, look at this. <laughs> I dropped it. 
<laughs> okay, let me do another one. Try not to drop this one. Here it is. It's really, really hot. I should have let this cool for a bit. Very hot, very delicious. Holy cow. Let me fix this so you don't get such a close up. This is the bomb. And I'm really glad that I used ground chicken instead of ground beef. And I'm glad that I used red and orange peppers instead of gray-green. So I hope you'll give this recipe a try. Again, I'll post the list of ingredients in the description box below. Please like, subscribe, and tap the little bell icon to receive notifications. And please, if you have a moment, post a comment below because I do read all of the comments and I do love hearing from you. Okay. I hope you have a wonderful day. Thanks for spending time with me. And I'll see you very soon with another delicious recipe. Bye for now.